And Nigel Martin's not the only one returning to a former workplace. Newcastle's Robert Lee used to operate the turnstiles at the Valley. He went on to play for Charlton before moving to the North East. And he considered the prospect of a trip home with Tony Gubber. Well, it, it started a long time ago. My dad sort of like comes from Croydon, South London way, and he supported Charlton for, since he was a little boy. Uh, he used to be like, in charge of the stewards over there, and he, he took me over there when I was a, I was a kiddie, and um, took me over there when I was 14, 15. I was on the uh, certain styles for a, a few games, and then uh, then, then I just joined the club, which was just a game, since I joined the club when I was about 17, and uh, I was there for sort of, like, nine years. So it's, uh, uh, I've got a lot of you know, feelings for the club, so uh, it'd be nice to go back. A big family contingent will be at the match on Sunday. Who, will they, who are they going to be cheering for? Uh, there's no doubt they'll be cheering Newcastle. I mean, uh, um, uh, we've got a, a few friends that probably will be cheering Charlton, but uh, all the family will be, will be cheering Newcastle, definitely. And Newcastle have not beaten Charlton in an FA Cup tie. Do you know that? No, I didn't. <laughs> Thanks for that. No, uh, no it'd, be, it'd be interesting. I mean, uh, uh, by all accounts, I've heard they're, they're a very good home team and uh, they've had a lot of, lot of bad luck this year. Um, they've got some good players, and um, we'll have to be our best to, to, to beat them. Um, you know, but if we play like we've played in the last two games, then uh, you know, I'm sure they'll have a tough game as well. That game's tomorrow, of course, and it won't be easy for Newcastle, will it? No way. You go to the Valley, and you, another draw you wouldn't like. You know, Kevin couldn't have enjoyed listening to the draw there. But at the same time, you've got to go for Newcastle game. So they many have, good players. Yeah, yeah, too many good players. You know, and your man Shearer, he can get goals from anywhere, and therefore, as you know, they're worth their weight in gold. That's right. Let's um, have a look at the other games featuring first division sides against Premier League opposition. Any, any potential upsets there? Certainly not Leicester, of course. Uh, um, no, we'll leave Leicester <laughs> out for you, Gary, you know. But you, you go Notts Forest. That looks an iffy game for Stu Pearce, you know, against Ipswich. Ipswich are a side that just pull off the odd result here and there. Uh, Chelsea, West Brom. I think Chelsea are going to have a very good year, and the cut run could be on for them. Okay, looking perhaps further down at the ones that have to travel, um, we've obviously saw Nigel Martin there. That would be difficult going back there, because Palace have been going well in Division 1. Yeah, but I still fancy Leeds. He's such a good goalkeeper, he's such a good saver, that I think they're going to struggle to beat him on the day. And uh, Leeds have got to come good, and I think it's, they're about due. I think George will get it organised and get it going there. Okay, you know what I'm going to ask you now. Your, your tip for the cup this year. My tip of the cup may surprise a few people, but I'm going for a bit of an outsider, yeah. 20 to 1, Wimbledon. Wimbledon, we can't consider Wimbledon outsiders nowadays. We've got to consider Wimbledon as, a, oh sorry, as outsiders. Yeah, right. 20 to 1's a good yeah, bet, isn't it? It is a good bet. In a race like that. So therefore, I say they've got the, the ability, they're playing so well, and they can win away from home. League, and, League and Cup double then? Could be possible. Who knows? And I'm going to go for Chelsea. Sorry, rude. Now, we're going to leave the cup there and look back at the Premiership action from New Year's Day. Liverpool went into 1997 with a five-point lead, but not for the first time this season. There was an upset at the top. At Stamford Bridge, the player-manager was the most difficult to identify in the cold, the famous dreadlocks hidden from view. The decisive mistake, though, was clear to all. Matteo. Line by Thomas. Drew a chance for Di Matteo. A late gift for Rudhuric's team. Kevin Keegan had been spoiled with presents in their previous game. But Alan Shearer would start the new year as he'd ended the old. Ferdinand wins it. Oh yes, Shearer from the edge of the area. And it's as simple as that. Peter Beersley will take the corner. One by Ferdinand. Shearer. All charged up. And Shearer gets the goal. Beardsley. Spots Rob Lee's run. Left foot chip. Penalty area. Ferdinand. 3 0. Highbury was ready for a party, with Ian Wright eager for celebration, his 200th league goal a must. For a while, though, it seemed he might be upstaged by Dennis Bergkamp, who scored with a fine volley after only 15 minutes. But on the stroke of half-time, courtesy of a poor defensive header by the striker Michael Beck, the prized goal duly arrived. The Middlesbrough never really got into the game was confirmed 
by Ravanelli's penalty miss. No irritation shown, though. The Italian left that to John Hartson, whose language led to a red card. With an 8 o'clock kick-off against Aston Villa, Manchester United hoped to finish the holiday season in second place. Father Christmas had brought the smile to Alec Ferguson's face. But New Year's Day would see something of the return of the frown. Concentrating too much of it for Keane, and here's Cantona, and there's a real chance for United here. Three in the middle, here's Giggs! How did he miss from there? No one's picked up Milosevic. Two on the edge of the six-yard box. He's being crowded out at the moment, Milosevic. He is very one-footed. And he went down and it's a corner. Well, these were Villa's claims for a penalty. There might have been something in that. Goodison Park had its lowest crowd of the season for what proved to be a depressing performance by the injury-hit Everton side. In contrast, Blackburn looked to have put the problems of 96 behind them. Tim Sherwood, with utter simplicity, scored the opening goal after 18 minutes. And then, just after the half hour, he linked with Gallagher for Chris Sutton to confirm what a difference a bit of confidence makes. Two victories from four games, seven points out of 12 is Stuart Pearce's managerial career to date. The lads are certainly responding, which is more than can be said for West Ham's Mark Reaper, who allowed Kevin Campbell to steal the game's only goal. Victory for Gordon Strachan, the fifth consecutive, would have equaled Coventry's best sequence for 27 years. The headlines, though, would be very different. First the goals, the opener after only six minutes. An instant reaction from Michael Bridges. Within four minutes, McAllister's corner, Dion Dublin's header, 1-1. The players made light of the difficult surface, but Liam Daish's injudicious challenge on Sunderland's new boy from Burnley, John Mullen, brought the award of a penalty. Steve Agnew accepted with gratitude. Three goals, 18 minutes played. Another 10, and another dead ball kick by McAllister, and Daesh had the chance to return. Then two of the scorers, Bridges and Dublin, became involved in another tale. After talking to both players, the referee sent Dublin off. Coventry's ten men survived for another 50 minutes. Barry Davis describing the action there, and that leaves the top of the Premiership looking like this. Liverpool's advantage now over Arsenal is back to two points. Man United remain third, and Newcastle's happy Christmas puts them well in contention. Wimbledon, Villa and Chelsea are still not out of the equation. And John, does anybody want to win it? It just needs somebody to take a grip, win five or six games, and they could find themselves clear. Gary, it's great for football, isn't it? It is good. You've got it wide open there. Everybody got a chance in the top six for me. And uh, just maybe Arsenal may just creep through at the end of the day because they're a side playing well at the moment and uh, they've got that fellow right up front who, like you, knows how to score goals. All important. Unfortunately, you'll miss a few games for them as well, though. <laughs> Now, the big game in Scotland was the meeting of the old firm on Thursday night. It was surely Celtic's last chance to make a real dent in Rangers' lead at the top. But alas, the story was all too familiar. Oh, belts, I think, going for power. Donald, that's Cadets! He's offside! 
He's offside. Terrific finishing, but it won't count. Rangers getting out quickly enough. Well, did they? No, he's onside. The linesman was wrong. Petrich played him onside. Ferguson's pass. He's in serious trouble in Ferguson as Rangers break again. That's for Bo Anderson. This could tie it all up. Remarkable finishing from Rangers. And Rangers now lead the Scottish Premier Division by 14 points. Their position could be made to look slightly less impregnable if Celtic can win their two games in hand. But um, that was a big game, wasn't it? They really need to do something. Game, set and match, I think that was going. You know, I never believed in making substitutions. Uh, when games were close and tight, and there, Celtic made one there, but they brought Stubbs off, which I couldn't believe with the game at 1-1, and two goals go in, and also Rangers let a goal in after taking right. Gascoigne off. Not too bad decisions as well. But, um, John, thanks very much My for coming in game. today. And uh, I know you can't get to the game today, but whenever the replay is, enjoy it. Sure. Right, before we go, let me remind you that along with tomorrow's live game, there's also FA Cup third round action on Match of the Day tonight. The surviving games are Little Stevenage against Birmingham, Wrexham, West Ham and Arsenal against Sunderland. That's BBC One, 10.45. OK, that's it. If your team's match is off, get yourself in front of the fire, put your feet up and watch the rest of Grandstand. Steve will soon warm you up. Well, even if the action doesn't warm you up, the opinion certainly will. And standing by, live in Harare, is Jeff Boycott with, I'm sure, some very forceful thoughts on England's desperate performance in Zimbabwe. That'll be straight after the lunchtime news in about five minutes' time. And the action, that's first class as well. A great effort to get the Welford Road pitch ready. Leicester against Toulouse, the European Cup semi-final.